The film and sound section of the Australian War Memorial is a curatorial area within the Memorial's National Collections branch. The section is responsible for the acquisition, preservation, digitisation and providing access to the Memorial's film, video and sound recordings. The scope of the film collection is large, spanning a period that commences with the Boer War and continuing to the present day. The film collection currently includes almost 3 million feet of original cine film and over a thousand hours of original video. All film material relating to the First World War was shot by British official photographers until May 1917, when John Trelaw, who would later become the first director of the Australian War Memorial, established the War Records section. He appointed Captains Hubert Wilkins and Frank Hurley as Australia's official cinematographers. Ellis Ashmead Bartlett, a British war correspondent, was the only person to shoot motion picture footage of the Gallipoli campaign. During the Second World War, Frank Hurley, under direction of the Department of Information, headed a team of cinematographers, including Academy Award winner Damien Parra. During the late 1940s and early 1950s, the military history section covered the activities of the British Commonwealth Occupation Force and of Australian forces in Korea. From 1965 to 1975, the memorial has footage from Defence Public Relations that covers army operations in Vietnam and Borneo, as well as activities and exercises in Papua New Guinea. The work of acclaimed reporter cameraman Neil Davis is also represented in the memorial's collection, as well as extensive interviews from David Bradbury's award-winning documentary, Frontline. Tank column was approaching because they fired a few times uh, to let people know they were about, I think, and crashed through that gate. RAAF and Navy public relations footage from this time was used mainly for television releases and covers operations in Vietnam, activities and exercises in Australia and the RAAF based in Malaysia and Thailand. From the 70s onwards, Defence continued gathering public relations footage, which consists mainly of promotional productions and Australian peacekeeping operations. Notable acquisitions from this time include footage shot during conflicts in the Middle East. Raw footage and completed film productions have also been commissioned or purchased from filmmakers. The memorial's first official cinematographer captured over 100 hours of footage during commissions to Iraq and Timor in 2006 and 2008. Not all of the memorial's film and video collection derives from major organisations. Private donations of amateur footage not only offer unique accounts of Australian military history, they also captured events that official photographers have missed. These include the first raid on Darwin, the action by HMAS Canberra against the German prize ship Keti Brovik, and more recently the withdrawal of the Indonesian army from their barracks in East Timor. With the prevalence of affordable camera technology, the memorial expects an increase in donations of amateur footage from service men and women. The memorial's sound collection holds over 5,000 items, combining to a total duration of over 7,000 hours. 90% of the sound collection consists of oral history recordings which cover nearly all of Australia's conflict and peacekeeping involvements. Oral history interviews are conducted by memorial staff on site or in the field. They are also acquired by donation or commission. Important sound items include the opening of the war memorial. So when it was decided to build this memorial, it was hoped it would not only be a record for the men that fought and fell in the war, but it would also be a reminder of the barbarity, of the utter futility of modern war. Speeches by Prime Ministers. That this unknown Australian soldier might continue to serve his country, he might enshrine a nation's love of peace and remind us that in the sacrifice of the men and women whose names are recorded here, there is faith enough for all of us. And the Keith Murdoch Sound Archive, a collection of over 300 interviews with World War II veterans. The sound collection also contains recorded letters from servicemen 
I am now looking forward to but one great day, my departure for good old Ozzy. Let this metal disc convey to you all my best wishes for a Merry Christmas. Hi darling. Well, we got back last night from a rather extended operation. We went out for eight days and it ended up 14 days. Although there we go with the guns all. Radio transmissions. One, two, bravo, lockstep, prepare to copy over. Operational sounds of weapons and equipment. Three one, no, we've got two casualties. Um, I'm trying to whip around the left, but uh, I think we might be a bit doubtful on that. Radio variety programs and documentaries. And one of the great privileges of my life was in meeting and knowing and working with uh, Sir Edward Weary Dunlop whose immense courage and skill and example and humanity kept us all alive. It was a, a business of survival. I heard a grenade land in the shell hole, and as it was coming in, I could see the fuse spluttering. And I thought, this is it. Recruiting announcements, commercials, jingles, speeches. On active service. Addresses and military band music, including marches. A high standard of knowledge and technical expertise is required to acquire document, transcribe and preserve the variety of formats that make up the sound collection. Curators accept film, video and sound items in all formats, but strive to acquire the original version where possible. All donations undergo assessment before they can be added to the national collection. Audiovisual material is stored in climate-controlled vaults to maximise its useful life. This slows or prevents problems such as vinegar syndrome and shrinkage the film and sound section is working to make preservation copies of all items in its collection. Original film is copied to polyester film stock and then a digital master video is made. Original video received by the memorial is also preserved by copying to digital video. Sound collection items were once copied to analogue tape but are now digitised for preservation and access. A large proportion of the film and sound collection is made accessible to the public in the Memorials Research Centre. Copies of items can be purchased for commercial use through the Memorials eSales team. The Memorial looks forward to the acquisition of more film, sound and digital material. Donations and inquiries may be addressed to the Curator, Film and Sound Section, Australian War Memorial.